What's cracking? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs gotta eat. BDGE fantasy football. If you're joining us on YouTube, welcome. If you're joining us via the podcast, also welcome. I don't know why I divided the two, but everyone's welcome here. We don't discriminate, baby. It's Monday. We are doing our waiver wire video, but this one's going to be a little bit different. We are nearing the playoffs, right? It's going to be week 13 this upcoming week. For the most part, uh, playoffs start in week 15 for a lot of leagues. If you play in a, a league where you have six teams or more that get into the playoffs, then week 14 is also a playoff matchup. So what I've done is I've compiled, uh, you know, I made a, a few little charts, some graphs, some cute little things for y'all to help decipher which guys you should be picking up now to play in ahead for quarterbacks, tight ends, defenses, because those are the three positions in which you stream in fantasy football. If you are streaming running backs or wide receivers, my friend, you have a problem, and you probably are, actually, you 1,000% are not in the playoffs anyway. So this is for y'all that are heading into the playoffs. You have been streaming these positions, and now you want to know, you know, four weeks in advance, who should I have a quarterback in week 15? Which defense should I be picking up to stream in weeks 15 and week 16? Because that can dictate the difference between whether or not you bring home the hardware in fantasy. A negative one-point performance from a defense that you shouldn't have streamed versus a 15-point performance can absolutely swing the outcome of a game. That's why I'm here. Y'all listen. I preach. I give you the big facts only. Y'all pay the bills, baby. This is the beautiful setup that we have. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And all of the charts, so this is actually going to be made into a, a file that you can export. If you would like to download these charts, all you got to do is go to the description down below. It's the first link in the description. It will take you right to a landing page where you can download these charts. So realistically, you don't even got to listen to my ass right now. All you got to do is download the charts, look at it yourself and figure it out, but you won't get my analysis. Either way, I would suggest sticking around. If you are on the podcast, this is a much more visual episode than normal. So, um, so I would suggest you join us on YouTube. Either way, these will be available for download. First link in the description down there for you to download if you are down there, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. We're hitting you with fantasy football stuff all year long into the chip, into the offseason, into the summer, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're going to be around here forever. That's the plan. Let's get into the video. Last thing before we hop in, I know last week I talked about a, uh, a Jersey giveaway from the Jersey Jungle. You had to go follow myself on Instagram. You had to go follow the Jersey Jungle on Instagram. We have picked a winner, and that winner is Mason Headbird. Shout out, Mason. You took the dub today. You will be getting your own jersey, whichever team, whatever sport, whatever player, doesn't matter. You have one. Uh, if you are watching this video, please go hit me up on Instagram, uh, my personal Instagram, at Nick Ercolano. Just send me a DM, uh, and I'll hit you back, and I'll link you up with the Jersey Jungle, and y'all can go configure it from there. If anyone else is interested in just getting a jersey from them, they start at like $40, and they're really, really, really high quality, I would suggest you just uh, you could just go on Instagram and DM him. He does not have a website set up, but tell him your man sent you. He will hook you up with free shipping, very cheap, very high quality jersey. So check out the Jersey Jungle on Instagram. Congrats to Mason. Let's get into the quarterbacks. So what I did here was pretty much created this chart where we broke down week 14, week 15, week 16. And I looked at some of the highly owned quarterbacks that a lot of you guys have probably been, you know, streaming or have been starting up to this point and uh, took those that have a very bad matchup. And then I looked at what we call the anti-bad quarterback. So I, I, have a, I have this problem, right? I have a habit, a bad habit where... If I can't think of the antonym of a word, the synonym, the anti-synonym of a word, all I do is take that word and put anti in front of it. Now, obviously, I know what the antonym of bad is. It's good. These are the anti-bad quarterback matchups. And these are all guys, I tried for the most part to put guys that have, um, that are that are highly unowned or at least like 60% and under. So it gives you a wide variety of guys. I'm not going to um, go through every single quarterback or wide receiver or tight end and be like, oh, these are the guys with good matchups. These are the guys with bad matchups because listen, you don't have the fucking luxury of sitting Todd Gurley if he's playing at Chicago. I know he's not, whatever, but you get the point, right? These are guys that are realistically probably in your starting lineup. And then realistically, you could probably pick up. Week 14, we're looking at guys like Wilson, Russell Wilson, Trubisky, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, 
all have um, not favorable matchups. So that's actually a good week to own one of these quarterbacks because there are a lot of streaming options available on the wire that would be ideal. Uh, Jared Goff is on the bad quarterback matchup list in both weeks 14 and in week 16. He's playing at Chicago in week 14, which is, you know, for as good as our offense has been, it's it might be uh, a time to sit Jared Goff there. They're at Arizona in week 16, which is not necessarily a like a, a fade matchup, but they've been a lot better against the pass than they have been against the run, and they will be on the road. So one player that you could fill in for both of those spots would be Baker Mayfield, right? Coming off this huge win against Cincinnati, uh, since Hugh Jackson has been gone, they have absolutely lit that shit up, and Baker looked incredible yesterday. He takes on Carolina at home in week 14. Panthers' defense is, is largely, largely fraudulent. People think they're good for some reason, but but they're not, especially when they're on the road. If they're at home, they're much better than when they're on the road, but they are really just not that good overall. Um, they've allowed the seventh most fantasy points to the quarterback position this year in fantasy football, and over their last five road games, they are averaging 312 yards per game allowed to opposing quarterbacks and have allowed 12 touchdowns in those five road games. Uh, a good streamer if you own uh, Wilson, Trubisky, Cousins, uh, Jared Goff. Dak Prescott is another really good pickup right now. He is really, 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 really hot right now, right? He's coming off that big Thanksgiving day, uh, like 26 or 27 fantasy points. He has really good matchups in weeks 14 and 16. He has two home games, Philly, week 14, Tampa Bay, week 16. Mwah, gorgeous. Philly obviously has no cornerbacks right now. Uh, Tampa Bay is just god-awful, so Dak is not only really hot, but he's playing against two really poor pass defenses at home, so you gotta love Baker, you gotta love Jared Goff, I mean, uh, fucking Dak Prescott, both owned in 55% or lower of leagues, uh, James Winston is still available on the wire in 40, 53% of leagues, Lamar Jackson is still available in 58% of leagues, uh, and, and you're looking at Matthew Stafford. If you're someone who has started him, I mean, at this point, you're probably not starting him. He's probably not in your lineup, especially if you're looking to make the playoffs. Uh, but if you do have him in your lineup or if you have been starting him, it's almost time to dump him because in weeks 15 and 16, he absolutely cannot be played. So he will play Matt, uh, at Buffalo in week 15. And for as big of a joke as Buffalo is, shout out Bills Mafia, yo. Um, I, I need to get up there for, for a game in Buffalo, to be honest with you. I would love to come tailgate for one of those games. Uh, their pass even is actually very, very, very good and very underrated. They are literally allowing the fewest fantasy points to the quarterback position in all of 2018. That's, that is not skewed, the uh, the fewest amount of fantasy points to the quarterback. If you look at this tweet I put out earlier today. Make sure you're following me on Twitter, at Nick underscore B-D-G-E. The Bills are currently allowing the fewest fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks in 2018. Yes, I already said that. Thank you, Nicholas. If you go back to week four... From now all the way until their week four game, Tom Brady is the only quarterback that has thrown for more than 177 yards against the Buffalo Bills, and that is a stretch of seven games. 177 passing yards they have not allowed anyone besides Tom Brady to surpass in their last seven games. God damn, God damn, God damn, Drizzy voice. Um, what else we got? Andy Dalton has Oakland at home in weeks 15, and then he hits Cleveland in week 16. Now, I know Dalton got a little bit banged up, so it's hard to tell, you know, where he stands on his sprained thumb or whatever. The thing about that is uh, that gives him, like, three weeks to rest. I'm sure Andy Dalton will be back by that time. The other good thing is AJ Green will certainly be back by weeks 15. So there's a good chance that Andy Dalton gets dropped this week by someone in your league. If you need to stream him, now is probably the time where he will open up in waiver wires and you will be able to uh, pick him up because he's coming off a bad game, he's coming off an injury, and... He will be probably more widely available than the 57% he currently is. And those are two really, 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 really good matchups in which he will have um, in which he will have his top weapon back, which obviously makes the entire offense run a lot smoother. So I like Dalton there. And, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson is just a, a, a guy that I would just like to have on my team. Because if something happens to your quarterback, you know, he has a bunch of good matchups coming up over the next few games, um, and, and week 15, if you have one of the quarterbacks in the week 15 slot, Rodgers at Chicago, Wentz at LA Rams, Stafford at Buffalo, Jameis Winston at Baltimore, those are four really tough matchups, and those are four quarterbacks that are likely starting in most leagues. You're going to have to get on top of this quickly. I know it's like three weeks away, but 
there is slim pickings in terms of guys that you would want to start or stream that week because you have Dalton, who's home against Oakland, so he'd probably be the top priority, or Lamar Jackson, home against Tampa Bay. Both of them are going to be really good starts at that point. Derek Carr at Cincinnati, obviously you don't trust Derek Carr for shit, but it's hard to trust Cincinnati's defense. He would be my last streamer there. Um, I would rather have Josh Allen at home against Detroit, 2% owned, so he's widely available. And speaking of Josh Allen, man, he could be big in weeks 14 and 15 for you if you're in a two quarterback league or if you really, you know, if you're really hurting a quarterback right now. He's had a couple of monster fantasy games already in 2018, and he's pretty much, he's pretty much the Blake Bortles of Buffalo, but with a higher rushing upside total for fantasy, and that's always, you know, that's that's huge when you're talking about a guy who sucks at throwing the ball. He went off on Sunday, right? Yesterday he went for 100 yards on the ground on like 12 carries. He will play the Jets and the Lions both at home in weeks 14 and 15. The Jets have been mediocre at best over the last month and a half, two months against quarterbacks. They've given up like 20 fantasy points in a majority of those games to these quarterbacks. Um, And if you look at the, the stat lines of quarterbacks that are good on the ground, right, that rack up rushing yards similar to Josh Allen, we've seen them surrender like a pretty good amount of ground yards to them. It's 51 to Trubisky. It was another 44 to Ryan Tannehill, 28 rushing yards to Blake Bortles. So... I really like the matchup at home against the New York Jets, who have just not looked good as of recently. And um, and then he plays Detroit. I don't think I need to really say much about Detroit defense, um, especially on the road. So, again, those are you know just quick tips, quick analysis that I have for this chart. Again, first link in the description. You will be able to download all of these. Let's move on to the tight end position. Before we do, I would like to take a minute to thank our sponsors for the video. Yeah, I got a box under there keeping it up. Come on, y'all. We can do this. Yeah. Fantasy football. Fantasyjocks.com. How we doing? These are the industry leaders for fantasy equipment for your league, man. It doesn't matter if it's if it's football. It doesn't matter if it's basketball. It doesn't matter if it's baseball. It doesn't matter if it's hockey. It doesn't matter if it's NASCAR. It doesn't matter if it's Bachelor. It doesn't matter if it's golf. It doesn't matter if it's basketball. It doesn't matter if it's football. Man, I'm good. They got to get your boy on TV. Nah, but for real. They got, they got the belts. They got the rings. They got the trophies. Now's the time to order it, guys. We're talking about the playoffs already. Make sure your champion gets a goddamn trophy. Well-deserved. They got to play for 13, 14, 15, 16 weeks, and you're not going to crown them with anything. I know the money's nice, but it's much funner to walk around with one of these bad boys. Get the team's names engraved on the side of these, which is probably the coolest part about what they do. Um, I went to their warehouse, actually. I never even really talked about this, but I went to their warehouse last summer, I think they did, and they took me through their HQ, their respective HQ. Now, I got to say, it's probably nicer than my HQ, but they have this awesome, like, printing machine that they you know that they scan all the laser engraved stuff on it really high quality stuff is is the point i'm getting at and since it is you know sales week black friday cyber monday whatever you can use promo code take 10 or taco corp for 10 percent off your purchase don't say your man's never did nothing for you so check out fantasyjocks.com promo code take 10 for 10 percent off your purchase have everyone ship in 10 bucks and you'll got yourself a belt for ever Sorry, I got a lot of energy today, and the reason is because I, I was at another Friendsgiving. So I went to a Friendsgiving last Sunday, and then I had another Friendsgiving this Sunday, and I'm like, God damn, like, no, I'm not friends with these people anymore. For dinner, we had so much food, and I was in charge of, of bringing dessert, and my favorite dessert happens to be oatmeal cream pies. You know, those little Debbie's oatmeal cream pies? They're the goat. They're actually the goat meal cream pies, if, we get, if we're getting statistical about it. I ate nine of them. I ate nine oatmeal cream pies. You know the best thing in the world to do? They're only like 170 calories a pop. So like realistically, actually that's a huge portion of my daily calories, but you take like four or five of them, you unwrap them, you, you put them together, you smush them, you smush them and then you eat them. Actually, I'm going to show you a video real quick of me doing that. It was It was lit. That was four. So I ate another five after that. So it had me feeling some types of way this morning. I have no idea. But let's let's talk about tight ends. Same chart, same thing here. We're looking at bad and good tight ends, their opponents for that week, fantasy points allowed to the tight end position. Now, the tight end position is much, much more difficult to stream, of course, because quarterbacks, you kind of know what you're getting, right? You, you throw in a guy who's at home against a shitty defense, and you could pretty much expect, you know, 17 to 20 fantasy points, and you're like, okay, cool. For someone I didn't have to draft, for someone I don't have to give up a lot of fab for, that's perfect. Tight ends... Pretty much, if you don't have a good tight end, you're kind of you're kind of fucked. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, even if you have a streaming tight end going against a really easy matchup, 
it's far from guaranteed for them to fill in any sort of number of points. What I would do is just kind of look ahead at the guys that you have. Now, I th- this was a tough one also to do just because like if you own a Kelsey and Ertz, a Gronk, a Kittle, or you know any of those kind of guys, and they have a horrible matchup, you still are not sitting them. They could be playing against the number one fantasy tight end defense in the league. You have no leverage or no leeway to sit them, right? So I try to get guys that are like in between like that like elite tier and in between guys that are normally on the waiver wire that you're probably going to have to sit just based on matchup. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually not sure what's going on with Evan Ingram. Obviously, we heard right before the week started, right before the game started, he tweaked his hamstring or, some, or something. That's why I didn't play on Sunday. And now he is... Um, he is probably going to be sidelined for who knows, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. But what I will say is he had really tough matchups weeks 14, weeks 15. So you weren't going to be able to use him anyways. In week 16, he'll return. Hopefully he's back by then and he will play Indianapolis, who is the seventh friendliest fantasy uh, tight end defense in the league. So that's a good pickup here. Otherwise you see Evan Ingram on this list twice. You see Jimmy Graham on this list for weeks 15 and 16. Hard to trust him with the finger injury anyways. Um, who else? We don't really see anyone else, I think, on this list more than once. We see Austin Hooper against Green Bay, who have been the 29th friendliest team to tight ends, and Austin Hooper against Arizona, 27th friendliest against tight ends. He had a really bad game on Thanksgiving, really useless. That's because New Orleans is a very good defense against fantasy tight ends. But just take a look at this, and you could see that, you know, I know Vance McDonald has been kind of hard to trust, but. He uncharacteristically on Sunday let a touchdown slip through his hand. So had he caught that, you'd be looking at three back-to-back-to-back touchdowns, uh, touchdown weeks for Vance McDonald. And you'd be like, okay, you know, he's definitely usable. That's three straight double-digit fantasy point games for him. He finds himself on the good matchup list, the anti-bad matchup list in all three weeks. Actually, I lied, only two weeks. But it's the first two weeks. He gets Oakland and then New England. Two really solid matchups for you. Um, And I know he's 70% owned. But, you know, these things swing pretty drastically week to week, depending on who's on buy and whatever. I'm sure some of those were like Travis Kelsey owners, and they'll drop him now. And you look at Ben Watson's also on this list. He gets two amazing matchups, right? He actually hits all three all three weeks. So he's a decent streamer all three weeks. He is at Tampa Bay, and then home against, oh no, and then he's at Carolina as well. So those are the, the friendliest and the second friendliest fantasy tight end defenses in the entire NFL. So he has the two best matchups in weeks 14 and weeks 15. And I know Ben Watson has just been like really, really, really hard to trust. But, you know, when, when I, I've watched him this year, right, and he was someone I was high on coming into the year, it doesn't look like he's lost anything. He's still making very tough catches, like contested catches. He's still running really well. He's able to beat linebackers and he's able to beat safeties and things like that. But um, it, I don't know. He's had some unlucky breaks. I know Drew Brees has overthrown him in the end zone multiple times since I've been watching. So he could have a much bigger year. Um, and they are still realistically looking for other pass-catching weapons outside of Kamara and Michael Thomas. I know Traquan kind of exploded for the last game, but he was out on Thursday night. And he's been wildly inconsistent. So, Ben Watson has two incredible matchups in a row for Weeks 14 and 15. I think he's a decent pickup if you are streaming the position. And I know looking at the rest of these charts, like most of these guys are very highly owned. But there's a chance that some of these guys aren't owned in your league, right? Like Cameron Brait obviously needs to be owned if uh, he's available in your league because he is the only tight end left in Tampa Bay. And Winston is just like Andrew Luck in the sense that he loves throwing to the tight end, especially in the red zone. We saw Brait catch a touchdown on Sunday. So um, I, I would consider him, you know, a pretty pretty locked in tight end one, at least like low end tight end one for the rest of the for the rest of the season. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. If you look at these guys, you have like four or five guys that are 65% owned or higher. And for the majority of leagues, especially ones that are sharper, these guys are not going to be available. But there's a decent chance that one of those four guys is available in your league. And I would try to just use this matchup sheet to um, compare, especially if you own one of the players on the top charts that you're not going to be able to uh, use that week. So just trying to plan ahead for y'all. That is the tight ends. Um, Before we jump into defensive streams, you know, guys, I do my rankings every week, obviously. If you want to get my rankings, if you want a private live stream that I do every Wednesday night, just for my patrons, you can head over to patreon.com slash bdge. That is where you will get my weekly rankings. That is where you will get private live streams. That is where you will get basically a community forum where people are chiming in and, you know, helping you out with your questions, sit stars, trade questions. And I will personally answer like 99% of the questions that are thrown on that forum. I can't get around to all the YouTube comments and Twitter DMs and all that stuff. So Patreon is a place where if you support me as one of the creators, then obviously I support you back and I thank you for that. So go check that out, patreon.com slash BDGE. It will be linked down below. Let's take a look at defensive streaming. 
targets to attack. Now, over the next few weeks, there are a lot of options at defense. And I mean, if you don't own like a Chicago Bears or whatever, you're most likely streaming week to week. Like you almost have to at this point. Um, and as always, there are three criterias I look for in streaming defenses. You should be the favorite to win your game. That's the most important. If you if the defense you're streaming is not even favored to win their game, do not stream them. Okay. So favorite to win their game at home and a low over under total. The bigger the spread is, the bigger they are as favorites, the better. The lower the over under total, the better. The more at home they are, the better. Not possible, but I just wanted to, I didn't really know how to finish off that third part. So big spreads, big favorites at home in low scoring games. Those are the things you look for. And if the defense that you find on the wire hits all three of those criteria, it's not an exact science, of course, but it probably will give you a pretty good fantasy day 75% of the time. I would say like eight fantasy points or more, um, probably much more, like 12 or more for the most part. The fourth thing I would say, if you're doing like a tiebreaker or something, I stay away from teams that are sh actual real life shitty defenses. Like say someone hits all three of those criteria, but it's like, we'll talk about it when we talk about week 15. But those are the three criteria I really look for. And of course, you're going to have to account for things like um, injured players that got, you know, someone on the defense, maybe a cornerback or a linebacker or something, uh, backup quarterbacks playing against them. But for the most part, those things are kind of cushioned into the spread and, and the points favorites and whatever. Last thing I want to say about this chart though, the spread on this chart, as well as the over under, you see like minus 11, minus six and a half, minus 10. Those are my projections. Those are all my doing because Vegas has not put up the lines yet for weeks 14, 15, and 16. It's too far away for them to have put these projections up. So this is my doing. I completely guessed on those, but I would say I'm pretty damn good at projecting what these spreads and what the over-unders are going to be for games. So I would say for the most part, it's probably 80 to 90% of, uh, of what the point totals are going to be for those specific games. But feel free to do your due diligence as you always should. Um, if you are planning on streaming one of these defenses or if you are looking ahead in that way. You see Denver on this list all three times. In weeks 14, 15, 16. All good matchups. All games in which I expect them to be favorites. And for the most part, low over under total. So I think they're a really good pickup. They are not at home in two of the three games, which is a little trifling. But I don't think they'll have a problem with San Francisco or Oakland, even if they are on the road. Um, and you see a few other teams on this list multiple times. New England is on there. In 14 and 16, you see Buffalo on there in 14 and 15, and Tennessee on there in 14 and 16. So there are multiple good options going forward. Um, Kansas City I put on in week 14. They're playing at home against Baltimore. I expect them to be pretty heavy favorites in that game with a decent over-under total. I think people will probably kind of be scared away because of Baltimore and Lamar Jackson or whatever, but I think that's perfect because Lamar Jackson hasn't actually played like a good NFL defense. He's super turnover prone, and I think uh, Kansas City will take advantage of that at home. They've played really, really well. They've had a lot of fan. They've scored a lot of fantasy points over the last few games, um, and in Week 13, which I didn't put on here, but they play Oakland, so they have Oakland, and then they play Baltimore at home. So you have two good matchups if you do happen to grab Kansas City right now. Um, and what I was saying before is. You see like Cincinnati on this list in week 15, right? They play Oakland at home and they are eight point favorites. 46 and a half is not a high over under total compared to this year. So you have fav big favorites uh, at home over under total is pretty low. The fourth, the fourth thing here is the fact that Cincinnati has an awful defense, right? They're terrible. Uh, I was looking at some of the numbers and over the last like eight games, I think their defense has scored negative fantasy points in like seven of, or in like five of them. So the tiebreaker there is if they hit all three criteria and you're trying to decide, like this is a good example between Atlanta and Cincinnati, right? The uh, the spread is about the same. The over-under total is about the same. They're both at home, but I think Cincinnati is a far worse real-life defense than Atlanta is, especially uh, Atlanta is going to get back um, Deion Jones by that point, so they'll be better. Um, so that is the tiebreaker. Don't pick teams that are really fucking bad real-life defenses, people. That is what I'll say. Um the best thing to do, though, is really plan this out, guys. When you're trying to stream a defense, if you're trying to stream a quarterback or tight end or anything like that, is really sit down and kind of write it down, whether it's an Excel chart or just like a piece of paper. Write a column week 14, 15, 16. And if you have one of your starting quarterbacks that has a shitty matchup, you know, look at which guys have a good matchup for that week and grab them on your team. Uh, especially for defenses, man. I am totally not opposed to rostering multiple defenses at this point. In one of my leagues, or maybe multiple of my leagues, I actually, I actually have three defenses and one of the things that allows you to do that is say you have like if you're in a one quarterback league and your quarterback is Patrick Mahomes 
you don't need to roster a backup quarterback, right? Because you are not streaming. He's starting your lineup every single week. So if you have extra roster spots, I would try to mix and match two or even three defenses if you have the room. If your starting lineup's really strong and you're not going to have to fill in anybody, get multiple defenses and play them off each other. Like if you have one that has a really good week 13 matchup and then another that has a really good week 14 matchup and then maybe that first one also has a week 15. So you're taking care of all of the weeks, right? Now is the time to start planning ahead because other people that are in your playoffs, the reason that they're in the playoffs are probably because they're pretty they're pretty savvy and they're pretty sharp. So they will be thinking the same thing you are, except you're getting probably a one week start now because it's only it's technically still week 12 because we have Monday night football tonight, Tennessee at Houston. Let me see, Tennessee at Houston. I need... I need Mariota and Demarius Thomas not to score 29 and a half points. Half PPR, four point passing touchdown. I'm a little nervous because all it takes is one shitty Demarius Thomas lucky touchdown catch and Marks Mariota to have like 17 points and I'm, and I'm kind of screwed in that sense. But if I get that dub, then I think I might lock up a playoff spot in the town get down. Currently have the most points in the league, but I'm in fourth just because... The win-loss record has not been favorable to me. I've had, I think, the most fantasy points scored against me. Speaking of the E-Town Get Down, I hope you guys have been enjoying that behind the scenes. I know I've gotten a lot of good feedback on that. We just ordered a shitload of new gear. Actually, it's all in this box right here. And we will be setting up the new setup at Max's house tonight and filming tomorrow. So the quality of those are going to get tremendously better over the next week or two. So looking forward to getting those out to you guys. I think that wraps it up, but let me know what you guys need in your Monday Night Football game in order to avoid a loss or take a dub, whatever saying you prefer. And again, guys, I would highly suggest you go download these so you have them, right? The charts are going to be available to you. First link in the description down below. Go download the charts for your own safety. While you're down there, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated, guys. Just to let, let me know that you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll keep making them for you. Also, if you are new, make sure you subscribe, drop a comment down below, and I will see you all on Thursday. Peace. <laughs>